Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. In this video, we will be measuring capacitance using a multimeter and a signal generator. I will also be sharing a web app with you that will take care of all the maths involved. So this video is complementary to my previous video on measuring inductance, a lot of similarities between those two methods and link down in the video description below if you're interested. So if you want to measure caps, the best and the most obvious way of doing it is using an LCR meter. Uh, they won't only measure the capacitance, they will also measure the quality factor, the internal resistance and inductance of a capacitor as well. Uh, quite useful if you want to get insights and in depth about how the capacitor will behave, uh, but usually an overkill for many small projects. Uh, another way to measure caps is to use the capacitance measurement function that exists on the multimeters. A lot of multimeters have it nowadays. Uh, it's pretty good. But with this method on the accuracy front, we will get close to the uh, multimeters capacitance measurement function. In fact, a little bit better with smaller caps. And, um, and if you have an LCR meter or a multimeter with a capacitance measurement function, this method is still useful to understand because it will give you a feel of the land on how capacitors behave under different AC signals and what can be calculated using the mats. On the multimeter front, I have a true RMS digital multimeter that can get pretty accurate readings in the millivolts level up to 7 kilohertz AC. And you will need a multimeter that can do accurate readings in the millivolts level in AC uh, up to 7, 10 kilohertz. Uh, it doesn't have to be a true RMS multimeter, but it improves the accuracy of this method drastically. And on the signal generator front, nothing special. I have a USB uh, scope here with a waveform generator. We will use it to generate uh, sine waves 0 to 1 volts from 50 hertz to uh, 7 kilohertz. So as long as you have anything that can generate that range of frequencies, it should be fine. And the circuit that we will use is like, can't get simpler than that. We just have a 150 ohm resistor connected to our uh, signal generator and we will connect the cap whatever we want to measure in series with that resistor get some measurements now let me pop the web app and our signal generator interface on the screen okay so before we start measuring anything we need to measure the resistor i know by the color coding on it it's 150 ohms but i want to get a more accurate read on it to uh, improve our measurements even further so i'm just going to measure the resistance of our resistor which is 149.92 ohms and I will input that to our tool. Uh, now we can start measurements. I want to start with a relatively large capacitor which is 22 microfarads and this is quite the upper boundary of using this method because if you want to measure larger capacitors than 22 microfarads you will need to use signals uh, low in lower frequencies, lower than 50 Hertz. And once we do that, we will be measuring some voltages across our circuit. And those voltages will be all, all over the place, depending on the frequency of your signal. And it, it won't be as accurate. So, so if you need to measure capacitors larger than 22 microfarads, or um, I got results in the ballpark up until 100 microfarads, but Above that, this method is not really viable. So if you want to measure capacitors um, above uh, 100 microfarads, this method will not work great. You either need to use a, an LCR meter or the capacitance measurement function on your multimeter, or you can just build a charge time uh, calculator a, with a microcontroller. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's start with this one. I'm just going to before measuring the caps and uh, you just want to discharge it just in case it's discharged and then I'm just going to use my, the probe of my multimeter to discharge it and then put it on the breadboard in series with the resistor. This is an electrolytic cap so I just want to uh, just be aware of the polarity of it. Once we do that I will switch to uh, AC voltage readings in millivolts range and um, I need to turn on the signal generator and we will start with 50 hertz uh, 50 hertz is good for measuring in the microfarads range but we will gradually increase the frequency as we measure smaller caps 
Okay, so the first thing that I want to measure is the voltage across our resistor. It's 79.61 and I will input that into our tool. And next I want to measure the voltage across the resistor and the capacitor. Okay, 111.18. And we also obviously need to put the frequency in there, which is 50 Hertz. And there we go. That's a 21.78 microfarads. It's pretty close. It's within the component tolerances. So I would call this a good reading. Now let's try another cap. This is another electrolytic cap at one microfarad. Uh, we can keep the frequency at 50 Hertz. I don't think it will, we will need to increase it any further at this stage. Uh, we will measure the voltage across the resistor, 15.90, 89 maybe. And then we will measure the voltage across uh, both the resistor and the cap, 342 342.21, 342.21. So we got 986 nanofarads, which is pretty darn close to one microfarad. And again, the measurement is well within the component tolerances. Now let's measure something in the nanofarads range. And this is, uh, I don't know if you can read it on the camera, but it says 22J2A on it, which is a 22 nanofarad uh, capacitor with 5% tolerance. I'm just going to put it in series with our resistor, just as we did with the other ones. And our signal is still at 50 Hertz. It should be enough, I imagine. Let's measure the voltage across our resistor. It's 3.78. And let's input that into our tool. And now we will measure the voltage across the across both the resistor and the cap. 348.77. And we have 230 nanofarads on the tool, uh, again, which is very close within the component tolerances. So now let's go a little bit smaller. I have a 82 picofarad, 5% tolerance ceramic cap here. Now, obviously uh, our 50 Hertz signal is not good enough to measure that because the frequency isn't high enough for any current to pass through it. And if there is no current, then there won't be any voltage across the resistor and you won't be able to read anything. So I'm just going to measure the voltage across the resistor to show what I mean at zero volts. Uh, we are going to gradually increase the uh, frequency until we are able to read some voltage drop across our resistor. So I'm just going to jump into one kilohertz first. And let's see if we can read anything across our resistor. No, nothing. It means we need a higher frequency. Let's go to six, uh, two kilohertz, perhaps. Okay, there is 0 0.0102. So there is something there, uh, but we can go a little bit higher. Perhaps a uh, three kilohertz would be uh, better. And it doesn't have to be exactly three kilohertz. You just need to improve it a little bit. We will then put the frequency into the tool anyways. Uh, so now let's see, we have 0 0.08, uh, 0 0.08 across the resistor, 0 0.08 millivolts. And our frequency is uh, 2.96 kilohertz. Now, Let's measure the uh, voltage across the resistor and the cap, 349.46. All right, so we are reading 82.10 picofarads and this is 82 picofarads cap, okay? So now let's get even like, that's pretty accurate. And now let's use even a smaller cap, which is 22 picofarads. I'm just going to pop it in there and measure the voltage across our resistor. Okay, now we are reading 
zero. That means, again, we need to gradually increase the frequency. Um, I'm just going to increment it to four kilohertz perhaps first and see, again, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, 0 0.0203, 0 yeah, okay. 0 0.02, maybe could be a little bit higher, maybe let's jump to five kilohertz. 0 0.04, yeah, but that's good enough. Let's input our new values, 0 0.04, and our frequency is five kilohertz. And what is the voltage across the resistor and the cap? Let's measure that. Uh, 349.22, 49.22, and that's 24.32 picofarads. Uh, this measurement is quite accurate and it's within the tolerances of the component and also the multimeter, right? It's not like doing perfect millivolt measurements anyways. It will always be a little bit higher uh, than what the capacitance actually is, especially if you're using a breadboard because I'm pretty certain there is at least three, four picofarads of uh, capacitance here between the different rows of the uh, of the uh, breadboard, so that acts like a capacitance in parallel to whatever you are measuring, and it will just in increase the value a little bit. But that's very close. So uh, that's pretty much all to it. As usual, if you have any questions, if you have any trouble using the tool. Uh, let me know down in the comments and uh, I will also link the tool in the video description below. Thanks for watching my video. See you next time. Bye.